So my name is Flavio Roca. I'm a surgical oncologist and hepatobiliary surgeon at Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. Cholangiocarcinoma uh, is a term encompassing all biliary tract cancers. So the bile ducts that go from the liver uh, and into the pancreas. So it actually extends a quite uh, large spectrum of disease. Just like any other solid tumors, the mainstay of therapy for cure is surgery. Uh, and there are other options though. For example, if your tumor is confined to the liver, there are certain treatment options that can be directed straight to the liver. And certainly for those who are not candidates for curative therapy, there are other options such as chemotherapy, radiation. But what's most exciting is now the advent of new agents such as targeted therapy and immunotherapy that has provided other options for patients with this disease. So much like other uh, cancers that are difficult to treat, multidisciplinary treatment uh, and discussion is essential for glandiocarcinoma, particularly because some of the treatment options can be mutually exclusive. For example, some patients who may be candidates for surgery may also be candidates for a liver transplantation. And because those cannot occur in the same setting, there needs to be a discussion for what's the best treatment for that specific patient. I think also with a lot of new data emerging about new systemic agents and the possibility of treating patients to downstage them or give them some upfront treatment with the goal of getting into surgery is a real possibility. So these discussions need to happen uh, prior to starting any treatment. I think patients and families are always overwhelmed when they hear diagnosis of cancer, particularly one like cholangiocarcinoma, which some of them barely have even the chance to spell or say. And it can be a very devastating diagnosis. The important part is for patients to know that there is hope and that there is chance for treatment. There are lots of questions to answer, and particularly at the first visit, the, the idea is to have an idea, uh, questions about what are my short-term goals, what are my long-term goals, what are the expectations? Are the expectations to cure the disease, to palliate the disease, to um, buy more quality time with my family? And these are all very uh, fair and real questions that need to be addressed. I think the other question that you should always ask your providers is what's their experience? What's their background? You should always have an idea of what is the volume of uh, patients that they see, not only themselves, but also that institution and that multidisciplinary team. So these are actually very big operations. We're talking about removing sometimes the majority of the liver, the bile duct, and even the pancreas. And so I think you have to be very careful when we have these discussions with your surgeon or other provider is what are my immediate risks? For example, risk of bleeding, risk of death, which are uh, not insignificant, but also what are gonna be my more comorbidities afterwards? A lot of patients also receive preoperative therapies with drains and catheters and tubes and that can be quite daunting, particularly to family and caregivers. So I think the more information you can have, not only pre-therapy, but also during your treatment course are very helpful. This is where other groups such as the Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation come into play and in actually working with patient advocates and having a, um, a network, a, a community, if you will, of other patients that have gone through this. And this is where the foundation can really help with that approach. As I mentioned before, I think it's really a challenging process. Um, these are not, these are very large operations uh, with potential complications. And so I think the goal is to, ha to have faith in the process, to really be there for support and actually ask questions along the way. I think a lot of times um, patients and families are scared to ask questions or to be involved. And I think it's the exact opposite. The more the family's engaged with uh, the patient and their needs, uh, the more we can actually provide a supportive network during this challenging process, particularly after surgery and in the uh, resulting uh, treatments afterwards. I think there's hope. Uh, I don't want to say that, the, that it's going to be necessarily completely back to normal. Uh, we have to take it sort of a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and this is where the challenge in this disease and in the treatments that we offer uh, are not necessarily all risk-free. But this has to be a shared decision between us and the patients. And I think uh, if we have the set the expectations up front with the short and long-term goals, I think we can each be satisfied with the end result. And I wish uh, that I could cure everybody, but that's not the case and that's not the reality. And I think having that frank discussion up front and during the process uh, is the most important thing you can have. Transparency is really, uh, and trust and rapport is what makes the relationship between a surgeon and a patient and their family work. I would just wanna say that it's a very rare disease. Um, I think it is a challenge 
And I just want you to, uh, patients to know that they are not alone, uh, that there are plenty of support through both the hospital systems and the foundation uh, and other resources that are both available uh, online or in person, and to please reach out.